Okay. Ready. Ready. Perfect. And we're almost there. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I am so excited for today's show because we are going to discuss whether or not salt is necessary. And if there's no salt, is there any high blood pressure? We're gonna discuss dietary methods to avoid or minimize the need for medication with Dr. C.E. Grimm, who not only worked with Dr. Walter Kempner, but he is considered one of the world's leading experts on salt and hypertension. Please welcome him to the show. It's very nice to meet you. Pleasure to be here. Well, great. I cannot wait to hear about your expertise because there, there's such a disagreement among so many people about whether salt is necessary in the diet, how much salt. And as we know, Americans are eating way too much of it. And usually it's in the form of processed food where it's hidden and you can't even taste it. So yeah. I can't wait to hear you weigh in on the truth about salt. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show a few slides that I use when I teach medical students about high blood pressure and also lay people. And uh, please feel free to stop and ask questions anytime that, that that's possible. All right. Thank you. Okay. So uh, can you see my first slide here now? Uh, the key principle of epidemiology. Uh, okay. Epidemiology. The key principle of that is that, uh, hang on a second here. Health, sickness, and death never occur randomly. All right. And our, our, our task of epidemiologists or doctors is to, find, to try to figure out why that person in front of you <clears throat> is sick today. I'm going to, I spent a lot of time working with what's called the DASH diet eating plan. DASH stands for Dietary Approaches to Stopping Hypertension. There's a ton of information about it. I'll show you a book that, that I recommend my patients get. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to re revoke, go through real quickly what the nutrition content of the DASH diet is, and uh, so everybody can get an idea. And it's actually quite close to your your diet, Chef AJ. Uh, they push more fruits and vegetables, fewer sweets than the control, and increase the potassium, magnesium, and it's a high fiber diet. Uh, <clears throat> they this was a feeding study where they took people and fed them for six weeks. They, everything they got, they eat, they ate either the controlled diet or the fruit and vegetable diet or the combination diet, which is the uh, DASH diet. <clears throat> we like to focus on what was in the diet. Uh, sodium was normally, uh, the normal person in the US eats about 3,300 milligrams. Uh, the DASH diet is 1,500. And, and I suspect yours may be even lower, Chef AJ. Yeah, Doc, I have not consumed knowingly really any dietary salt, added salt since like um, August 1st, 2008. And my blood yeah. pressure is 88 over 54. Yeah. And they always think I'm going to drop dead at the doctor's office. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the DASH diet is a high, low sodium, high potassium diet. Potassium has been shown to reduce, high dietary potassium reduces stroke. Uh, it's a high calcium diet, which is good for bones. Um, and it's also high magnesium. And again, I think you're eating plan is probably very close to that. Um, let me uh, skip on to a different. I'm going to run through some things here. Okay, here's a typical uh, servings of, of, of uh, meals per day. The control diet for this feeding study, they had nine grains, 1.6 fruits. You can see the fruit and vegetables was high here, seven and 5.2. And then you can see what the uh, what the dash has here, eight and 5.2. And nuts and legumes, I know you've, you start, start, start talk about those and not many fats and oils. Um, okay, uh, this diet meets all the recommendations of the American Heart Association to prevent hypertension, the heart, heart uh, American College Cardiology to prevent heart disease because of the lipids the ADA to prevent and treat diabetes and also meets the American Cancer Society guidelines for nutritionally ways to prevent cancer as best we know. And it's also good for osteoporosis. So it's good for almost everything, actually. It's um, <clears throat> the DASH diet lowers blood pressure enough on, on about 5.5 over three millimeters of mercury. And if we could do that in everybody, we'd lower heart disease by 15% and stroke by 27%. And the DASH diet begins to work. In fact, it works almost as magic in, by two weeks. The systolic pressure is down in one week and the diastolic usually down in two. 
Uh, all right. Uh, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna skip through some dice. Di okay. Uh, this. These are scanning electron micrographs of cubes of salt. All right. And I call them the die. The dice of death. We'll talk about that in a minute. The dice of death. I love yeah. it. <laughs> okay. So uh, the first concept is that without salt, we do not have high blood pressure. There are communities in the world, not many anymore, that have that eat a very low amount of salt, as we all. Our, our ancestors evolved on and they have no high blood pressure and blood pressure does not go with age, go up with age. So the increase in blood pressure with age is what we call essential hypertension. It's almost always driven by high salt intake. Now I'm gonna show you a few, few pictures from Dr. Kempner's patients. Uh, Dr. Kempner uh, was at Duke University, he invented the rice fruit diet. He specialized in difficult to manage hypertension in the forties when there was no way to treat hypertension. <clears throat> Here's a gentleman who came to Duke to see Dr. Kempner. He, his, this is his pressures. These kind of pressures in those days, uh, people didn't live a year usually. Okay. Uh, we also, he also has, since I worked in Wisconsin, what I call a Green Bay goiter here, a little bit of a belly. Um, <clears throat> he uh, went uh, on the rice fruit diet. Dr. Kempner's idea of the treat of treating uh, obesity uh, is that fat is like a cancer. You do not cure cancer by removing only part of it. You have to remove all of it. And you've done that, Chef Jay, yourself, and you know. Now I'm going to show you what happened to this gentleman when he went on the rice fruit diet. He became the gentleman on the right here. Okay. His blood pressure was completely normal. God, he looks amazing. Uh, Many people I show that to think he's starving, actually. Make that comment. You, you, and and uh, all right, uh, these are enlarged hearts. These are patients in the 70s he studied. This is a, a large heart. Here's a normal sized heart here. And in, in one month, this person, uh, several months on the rice diet, his heart went from this size to this size. At that time, it was thought that it was good if your heart got big and uh, with, with high blood pressure because your body was fighting the high blood pressure, but we now know that that predisposes to heart failure. Uh, EKGs, I know the people here are not EKG readers, but this is a normal one and this is called the T wave, it's upside down and bad hypertension, it's upside down like here. Here's a gentleman uh, who was uh, on the rice fruit diet and had advanced retinopathy. That's disease, uh, hypertension disease of the eyes. I'll show you an example in a minute. And his his uh, T wave became upright in in less than a month on the rice fruit diet. His blood pressure went down remarkably, and his eye disease disappeared. This was so unusual that Dr. Kempner was actually accused of substituting fake photos uh, for his uh, presentations. And uh, so here's a here's an eye ground, the background of what your eye looks like when the doctor looks in there. And uh, it, this is not very clear. It's got lots of bleeding in there, which you can't see, but I'm gonna show you what happens on the rice fruit diet. This has hemorrhages and exudates and, and you can't see the center of the eye. Normally you can see a nice little thing here. So this, this person went on the rice fruit diet and uh, the fundi became normal. This is a normal, and this was unbelievable. It, it was unheard of. Uh, and Dr. K, again, Dr. Kempner was accused. Uh, he had to get the head of the department to send a letter to JAMA where he was publishing this, the information. Now, here's what salt crystals look like under the micro, electron microscope. And I call them the dice of death. I, salt, salt brings on hypertension. It brings on sudden death. It brings on uh, uh, stroke and heart failure. Uh, and blindness, leading cause of blindness, abdominal aortic aneurysm from high blood pressure, stroke, dementia, and paralysis. All these things are what you're rolling with anytime you roll the dice of what I call the dice of death and dialysis on kidney machine. Here's another lady <clears throat> who went to Duke Hospital weighing 212 pounds. Uh, she, you see over here, she was 43 years old. She had severe hypertension on three drugs. She had uncontrolled diabetes and was on insulin three times a day. Her triglycerides are very high, normally about 150, and cholesterol was high. We, they didn't know how to measure cholesterol very good at that time. All right. Uh, we call this a metabolic syndrome. 
And I think you call it, Chef AJ, the Edaholic syndrome, or that's another name I use for it. Uh, I think you, it's, it is addictive. <gasps> yep. uh, okay, so this lady goes on the rice fruit diet and becomes this lady. All right. Um, and I bet you people think she's, people will say she's too She's thin, starving. Right? She's starving. Yeah. Here, here she is together. And here's what happened a year later. She's now a year older. She weighs 98 pounds. There's no hypertension on no medicines. Very low blood pressure is exactly like yours. Um, she has no diabetes. She's no insulin, normal fasting blood sugars. Triglycerides are normal. And her cholesterol went down a little bit. But as I said, we didn't know how to measure it very good in those days. I think this is, it doesn't take many examples like this to show how impressive the rice fruit diet is or used to be. There used to be a site called ricediet.com. They've sort of gone out of business now, but the books are still available. Um, I'm going to show you another study. This is a balanced study in, uh, in a lady, a black lady, who uh, was in a metabolic unit uh, by Dr. Dahl, who's a famous uh, salt doctor in the old days. And you can see the blood pressure here, the first section up here. Can you see my arrow? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's a control. And then you can see her blood pressure came down so much they thought she was just adjusting to the hospital. This is on the rice fruit diet. Uh, her diastolic went down 37 points. So they put her back on the salt here, okay? And uh, you can see the systolic went up and the diastolic went up 42 again, very quickly. And they put her on the low salt again, and again, it came down. And uh, so that's, that's a very good demonstration of the effect of the rice fruit diet on blood pressure under very controlled conditions. Um, all right. I'm gonna, another experiment on blood pressure was the so-called uh, um, uh, biosphere, the, the place they thing they built in in Arizona to test out surviving for two years in a in a enclosed environment. This is the doctor who was famous for suggesting that if you reduce calories in total, you you increase lifespan. Uh, this is at the end of two years. Uh, this is what he looked like. His blood pressure was very low. Uh, and I'm going to show you what he looked like about three months later after he'd gained back what he'd lost in that stage. His blood pressure went up. Um, so a demonstration that if you run out of salt, again, they couldn't, uh, they had no salt in there. Uh, and because of El Nino, they couldn't grow enough food to actually survive very well. So that's the reason they're, they're so low. Um, let's see here. Uh, all right. Why don't we want to stop for a minute for, uh, for some questions? I'd be happy. Do you, is that possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, there are some questions in the live chat that I can oh, ask. Okay. I have so many questions as to like, what is the history of salt? When did we start eating salt as as an as, as a seasoning, for example? Uh, salt history goes back about as far as as man goes back. Uh, man is always salt. You have to have some salt to survive. Okay, and that deer have to have some salt to survive, so they go to salt licks. Elephants even go in and dig dig out salt. The, every every bo body, human mammal, has to have salt to survive, but too much is is damaging. Um, and uh, ancient man or primitive man, paleo, the paleo diet should contain about two hundred and fifty milligrams of sodium, which is what Dr. Kempner's diet contains, and uh, probably what our our uh, our genes are are program to survive on that amount of salt. More than that gets us into trouble. That's incredible because many of the doctors I have on this show promote a completely salt-free diet, also free of processed yes. oils and right. processed sugar. They're not against fat, but they're against the processed oil. Right. And they believe that if we just eat whole natural food, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds in an appropriate caloric amount, that we'll get just from the natural food at least 500 milligrams of sodium per day. Is, is that accurate in your opinion? Um, yeah, well, it depends a little bit on what you eat. If you only eat vegetables and everything fresh, it's hard to get more than 250 milligrams, actually. Uh, so, and, and, uh, but anytime you, you stray from that, it will suddenly go up. And many patients who do well on a low salt diet will learn that if they eat too much salt again, their pressure will shoot up immediately. And Dr. Kempner even, even saw that. 
Yeah. And, you know, but we don't see that the disease rates and suffering from people not eating enough salt, do we? Uh, no. The only time we see that is, is times of famine when people are starving. Um, and uh, in the Dutch, Dutch famine, people were fainting and standing in line to get food because their, their blood pressure was too low because they had no salt. Right. So you have to have some. You're exactly right. So, you know, processed food did not exist throughout most of human history. And that's where I believe most Americans or most people are getting most of their salt. So where did we get our salt back in the day? Uh, well, salt was originally used as a preservative. So you could you could survive the winter with food or the summer even uh, with food that didn't spoil. If you didn't have that, you you might not survive. So you had to have some salt to cure your products, your meat, your cabbage, your kimchi, et cetera. Um, and it, it's still used a, way, a little bit, but we, never, we have refrigeration now. We don't need that salt. And yet it's put in there, I think, because people are addicted to salt. And when you take it out, they thank you. They, 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 uh, <clears throat> they protest. I've, I've studied, studied hundreds of normal people on a metabolic unit where we put them on a normal salt diet. And their common comment is, well, doctor, when am I going to get on the high salt, the low salt? I'm off this low salt diet. This is a normal diet. They keep telling them, no, 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 this is too low. Wow. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that salt is addictive because if it wasn't, why would it be so hard for people to either eliminate it completely or even reduce the amount? You know, there are people, have you seen these people? I have a friend like that and she'll order food at a restaurant and before even tasting it, they salt yes. it. Yes, I used to be that way. I stopped salt a long time ago. Uh, wow. that, it, that's taste, it still does taste good. I admit that. Yeah, uh, that's probably, That's amazing. You know, uh, people are worried, though, that if they don't eat salt, they won't get enough iodine. Uh, that's true. If you eat a non-iodized salt, you're not going to get enough iodine. But uh, the DASH diet is not really that, a problem with that. Uh, it, anything like bread that has salt in it, that's got iodine in it these days. So most things have enough iodine. It's not going to be a problem. Um, but it, it might be worthwhile checking once in a while to make sure if there's if, if one goes along. I have had one patient who actually developed a goiter, they think, in Australia uh, when she she was on a low salt, on a no salt diet and had didn't have enough iodine. You're exactly right. Right. Well, some people recommend having like a small amount of sea vegetables, sprinkling a little kelp or nori yeah. on their yes. food or, yes. or, or yes. things yes. like that for that, you know? Yes, yes, that yes. will help. Uh, one of the things that if people are interested in tracking their intake, I recommend using the app called Chronometer. C-R-O-N-O-M-E-T-E-R. I don't know if you know it, but you can type in exactly what you're eating and it will give you probably a hundred different nutrients. <laughs> if you, if, so you can track whatever you want to eat, iodine included. And I, I recommend my patients use that to track what they're eating. And it just takes a day or two to find out you're eating way too much salt for the 1500 milligrams recommended for the DASH. Yeah. But even the diet by the American Heart Association, isn't that in itself just still too high in sodium for yeah, most it, people? It, we, uh, the, the recommendations by the Heart Association now is that everybody who has hypertension should be on the DASH 1,500 milligrams or less. Uh, if, you, if you don't have any hypertension, maybe 2,200 is, uh, is okay. Uh, but one of the things we know is if, if you don't eat salt, your blood pressure doesn't go up as you get older. And that's, that's what really hypertension is. And we want to try to prevent that. Yeah. So hypertension is not a natural consequence of aging as people think. Not a normal, it's not a normal part of being human. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's not. Nor is, it's, nor it's is not, heart disease. Heart disease it, is not a normal part of being human. Yeah. It's, it's only it's, when you feed your roots wrong. You feed your roots wrong. So it's not just, it's not stress. What, what you eat matters and you can actually yes, either exactly. reduce or eliminate the need for hypertension medication. If people will stop eating salt. Yeah, we've done a number of studies showing that people on high blood pressure medicines can lower their medicines and even stop if they get to the appropriate salt intake for them. Everybody's a little bit different. Some people do well on 1500. Some people have to do a thousand. A few people have to go down to Dr. Kempner's 250, but not many. Wow, that that's really incredible to hear that, man. That yeah, you know, are, do we have an inherent? I know we people prefer salty food, but you know, like people, breast milk is the first food that that a human right. should get, and yes. and it's basically sweet. I don't know how much salt or sodium is in breast As milk. It's, it's the lowest, the lowest salt in milk in in mammals is in humans. But but doesn't the taste for salt have to be learned? 
It does. It does. There's a number of studies been looking at that in in newborns and infants that that uh, they do ad adapt to the salt intake. And you, as you eat more, you tend to like more. There's a very good book written by Dr. Denton, who I studied with in Australia, called "The Hunger for Salt." The brain is programmed to find salt because if you don't have salt, you will die. And every every animal, on every terrestrial animal, has to find salt or it gets into trouble. And the brain has their number of mechanisms that you might want to get that book and read the introduction to every chapter. It's beautiful. It, is, is the gentleman still alive that wrote it? No, no, he's he passed away a few years ago. Oh, he was in Melbourne. That sounds like I wrote down that book. It's he's, he would have been a fantastic the hunger, the guest. Hunger for salt. Yes, try to get that. You, you know, it's, it, it's so interesting because I don't, I don't, I choose not to eat salt, not because I'm trying to be like this, like, like, like brag or whatever, but my, right. my father was 50 years old when I was born and he had already had his first heart attack. Yes. So yes. my mother did not cook with salt and right. all my relatives and my grandparents, they all had heart disease. So I grew up without salt. So yes. I never developed a taste for it. And I remember when I was seven years old, I was visiting a cousin and she had given me a pretzel rod where oh, the yeah. pork salt yeah. is on the outside. Yeah. And I I yes. tasted it and I said, this is disgusting. So yeah. I personally never developed a taste for salt. So it's it's not, it's very easy for me to not eat it. And plus I'm a chef and I know how to use herbs and spices to right. make it right. delicious. But I can see by the people watching live and the people I work with, especially people that suffer from excess weight and food addiction, that they have a very hard time reducing or eliminating salt because they don't like the taste of the food. But that's good that you don't like the taste because then you won't eat as much. Yep. Uh, the final slide here looks at Japan. They lowered the salt intake in, in a community there and showed a decrease in blood pressure and stroke and heart attack and so forth. And there's similar studies have now been done in Finland where the government has changed the salt content uh, of most foods. It's, it's the salt lobby in the U.S. is extremely strong uh, and they've prevented uh, the removal of salts from most of our foods, which would be ideal. England is particularly leading the way also in having the manufacturers reduce the salt. That would save millions of lives, we think, if we could get it down. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, Ellen says, what about salt substitutes? So I don't like the potassium chloride ones. I like herbal salt substitutes, you know, made from herbs right. and spices. Yeah. Those are the ones I prefer. Yeah. Uh, potassium chloride is good because it has a lot of potassium, which is it's better to have a lot of potassium than not enough potassium decreases the risk of stroke, uh, also helps control blood pressure. Let me see if I can get my screen off. It, uh, am I still sharing here? Yeah. Would you like me to stop your share? Yeah. Why don't we just stop the sharing? Sure. Actually. I can do that for you. Here we go. And then, then you'll be nice and big. I'll actually uh, okay. make you big. That's, that is really interesting. You know, the processed food industry, the, Dr. McDougall says this too, no salt, no sale. When they take the yeah, salt yeah. out of right. like cheese at crackers, people just yeah. don't like them. Yeah. I've, uh, for years, I've had hypertension research meetings in every town where I was to get everybody together in town that was interested in that. And I, I, we usually provided a meal with that when we had invited speakers coming in. And I would uh, require that anybody brought the meal in had to do a DASH diet, a low sodium diet, basically your diet. And we've, there are not many commercial places that can do that. I'm hoping that'll change one of these days. So you can purchase food that is DASH compatible. Yeah. Uh, the recommendations are that everybody in the U.S. with hypertension, that's 100 million people, should be eating the DASH diet. Should be a great market, I think. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh, wow. So people are saying if you eat salt, what's the best salt? Himalayan, Celtic, Morton's? Yeah, salt is salt is salt. Uh, it's the sodium chloride that's in it that gives you the taste. Uh, the other thing may give you a different little bit of flavor. Some people don't like the salt substitutes that are high in potassium because it tastes metallic. It doesn't taste right. I'm one of those. I don't like that. Most of the substitutes. There is a nice study from China showing that if in families who replaced the salt with a salt substitute with the regular salt, had a, over five years had a decreased number of strokes and heart attacks in China. So there's there's a move in China to replace all salt with this salt substitute, which is high potassium. Were people eating less salt before processed food really became the empire that it is? Uh, well, probably because you had to have some to, while well, they were eating less, yes, because everything didn't contain salt. Everything now, if you look at the labels, if you're going to try to use your diet or the DASH diet, 
you need to have about 500 milligrams or less per per look per meal. Mm -hmm. There aren't many meals that provide that. Yeah, some of the I try to find cooked pre cooked things. There are a few things that are less than 500 milligrams per serving, but not many. So you basically have to fix it yourself. Yeah, well, and most people don't cook for themselves anymore. Right, these right no. And I th that's the reason I think there's a great market out there someplace. That, that, yeah, and that, restaurants, you know, and it's funny because even people that eat salt will tell you that most restaurants use more salt than a, a, you would yes, actually even yes. use at home. Yes, yeah. I was recently at a, <clears throat> a very nice restaurant in, Saint Louis, in this San Francisco and the salt was so much I couldn't eat it. Yeah, if, especially if have yeah. you ever heard of green salt? I had the manufacturer on the show. It what it is is it's sea asparagus. It's a sea vegetable, but because yeah. it's from the ocean, it has seventy five percent less sodium than table salt. Right, right. I uh, have not looked at it, but you've got to be very careful. Uh, uh, many salt substitutes actually are not salt substitutes. I, I had I remember I had a, having a patient at Indiana who we kept having come back in the hospital because of heart failure and swelling and edema. And I said, well, what are you eating at home? And he said, well, I, the only thing I eat is this natural salt that I bought online. Or this was through the mail before online was available. And I said, well, bring some in and let's look at it. And uh, I tasted it. It tasted like salt. We sent it to the lab. It was salt. I called the manufacturer and they said, well, it's natural salt. It's, you know, it's just real salt, not natural. It's natural salt. So it's really natural. It really is natural. But it, and it was. It was real salt. But it caused this guy lots of problems. That's interesting. Are you familiar with the last hunter gatherer tribe that's left on earth or one of the last? Yes. Like, they don't, they don't add oil and sugar and salt to their right. food. Yeah. There are several of those around the world, actually one in South America, Yanamano, I mean, I don't know which one you're talking about, but there's several been studied around the world. The Hudza is the one uh, that I interviewed yeah. the yeah, uh, and, person that stayed with them and they're not, they're not salt in their food. No, exactly. Exactly. And their, their urine sodium is very low. Uh, about 200 less than 250 milligrams what what we evolved on likely there's some there's some areas in africa that that had that same finding low salt no increase in blood pressure with age uh, there's never been a many black populations in africa show that but there's never been a western hemisphere black population that doesn't have an increase in blood pressure with age and it's probably related to the salt so when they say that African Americans often have high blood pressure, it's not necessarily because of their race. It's it's because they're probably eating salt, right? Uh, it's yeah, it's because of salt. But it, they, it, we have some evidence that they handle salt a little bit differently. They hold tend to hold on a little bit better. Better in in the old days, that was good when you were sweating a lot and you needed salt to survive. If if you if you held on the salt better, had a if you had a salt hump, we don't know where that is yet. Uh, then you're, when, when salt became, uh, your body became salt deficient from sweating or limited access to salt, then you got into trouble. Right. Elizabeth's asking about what, what about low blood pressure and what, what would you consider low blood pressure, high blood pressure and normal blood pressure? Right. Low blood pressure to me is when you're dizzy, when you stand up and I'd be very happy if all my patients had blood pressures like you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that that's a great answer because you know because what what may be low for one may not be low for another. But right. what what is considered high blood pressure now? Because didn't that change uh, yes. through history? Yes. What what number doctors started medicating yeah. people at? Yeah, the the way we first identified what was what we decided to call high blood pressure was the life insurance industry began to measure blood pressure in the in 1905 actually. And they found that those with blood pressures above 140, you didn't want to insure those people because they died early. Okay, insurance companies are in the business of insuring people who live a long time. The insurance industry learned very early that high blood pressure, you don't want to insure those people because they die early. Uh, and then uh, we, we, as more data was collected, it was looked like it was greater 140. You, were, you didn't want to insure, but the data that says if you lower that, you're better off, didn't occur until the 70s actually when blood pressure trials started. Um, and uh, sometime maybe we can talk about those blood pressure trials historically, they're quite interesting. Um, one, of, one of the key ones was in the vet, a veterans trial. And maybe sometime we can talk more about that. Well, you you have all, this is a fascinating topic and you have all the time you need. I'm curious that uh, people, when you medicate them for high blood pressure, what are you really treating, especially if they're not making any dietary or lifestyle changes? I mean, are you really extending their life and, and their health? Yeah, I tell all my patients they can out salt my medicines. Okay. 
you can, it's fine. I, no matter how many medicines I give you, you can out salt those if you eat enough salt. So you've got to get your, your diet down under control. If you want to minimize medicines, and many people can actually go off their medicines if they, uh, uh, if they move to the right eating plan. Right. Have you had, heard of Dr. Alan Goldhammer in the True North Health Center? He's done therapeutic water fasting for people with high blood pressure to get them off their medication. Yeah. Well, that's low salt. Yeah, it's no salt. It's no yeah. food. <laughs> one, one of my Dr. Kempner stories is uh, uh, I was on the house staff on Dr. Kempner's service and a, and a lady, a 75-year-old lady, was admitted to the hospital with a giant heart on x-ray and in heart failure. She didn't have an aortic valve so that the uh, her heart didn't work right. And uh, he put her on distilled water and her heart came right down. And I, I was, I, I would just, did, I didn't believe it. <laughs> just came right down. And, and uh, so I asked him, I said, well, Dr. Kempner, uh, you know, we now can uh, do trans valve transplants and valve insertions in the patients. He said, well, I sent somebody to that about a year ago and they died. This lady, as long as she stays away from salt, she's okay. As long wow. as she doesn't eat, she, she lived at one of the rice houses there in Durham. I wish they'd, I wish they'd bring them back. You know, yeah. I, I, I've been on the rice diet, not on purpose. I didn't need to yeah. lose weight, but there have been times, uh, not since the pandemic, but I used to travel extensively for yeah. my yes. speaking right. diseases and in, actually in other countries and being a 46 year vegan, I'm not going to bend on that, but you know, right. you do the best you can when you're away. And there have been times where for a period of like eight days, literally the only food I could get that would fit my eating plan, whole food, plant-based, no animal products, no sugar, oil, salt, right. was white rice and fruit, which right. is basically the Kempner diet. And what it was is. interesting about it is I could, I mean, I, I came home so thin, I, no matter how much rice and fruit I ate, yeah. I just couldn't, I, I kept exactly. losing weight. And you know, what was interesting is neither of those fruits really require salt to taste good. Uh, that's, that's correct. Uh, although some people that came on for the rice diet just couldn't stand it. And they, they went really? home See, and many of them died early. And, oh my goodness. Cause I think white rice is a delicious treat. Like what I'll put on my white rice, if I needed to flavor it, it's not soy yeah. sauce. I'll put a few scallions on and that's yeah. like delicious. Yeah. Right. And there are many different flavors of rice also that people don't know about. Yeah. I think. Right. That's amazing. So uh, Daryl, who's watching life, he's a retired physician. He has he says on, in the chat that he read somewhere that the minimum minimum sodium requirement is about 50 milligrams per day. Would that be accurate? Or I believe you said it's two. Uh, that's that's probably uh, it's probably less than that. Um, uh, at least our ancestors didn't have that much salt. And uh, maybe, maybe they they got a lot more blood than we get usually because blood has a fair bit of salt in it. Uh, but you need some salt. There's no doubt about that. The issue is how much salt do I need? Uh, the, you need enough salt that your blood pressure comes down and you feel you still feel normal. That's that's the real answer, I think. Yeah, and absolutely. the only way to, to find out if your blood pressure is salt sensitive is to move to the rice fruit diet or the dash diet for two weeks. Just take two weeks to get it down. Here's a, here's a book I recommend. I didn't write it. Uh, but it, it's, uh, it was written in 2001 and it's still the best thing talks about the science of the dash diet. So if people are interested, they can, you can download it as an ebook actually. Wow. Is the, is the author still around? Yes, they, he is. Uh, he's in Boston. It's Thomas Moore, M-O-O-R-E. And, uh, he has a website, I think they're, they're focusing on weight loss, but I'm, I'm more interested in, in, uh, the blood pressure because that's what kills people. Really, uh, the the record weight loss I've had on a dash diet, dash diet is 150 pounds of patients that lost that much. So it does work. If people were to lose weight, even without reducing their sodium, can that still help their blood pressure go down a little bit? Um, maybe a little bit, but I think Dr. Nealon stressed, uh, you know, that it's it weight is not the controller for blood pressure. We've done a lot of studies looking at the national data on blood pressure and weight. And blood pressure and weight go, as the weight goes up, it goes up a little bit to about 140 over 90, which we used to call normal. But above that, the weight, the blood pressure doesn't go up a lot. We've seen, and you've probably heard of many patients who had normal, very normal blood pressures that weighed four or 500 pounds. So it, it's not the universal thing. All right. That's interesting. That's a very interesting. But they're, they're, they might have other health consequences. Perhaps. Right. Oh, yes. Yes. There's plenty of other health consequences. Right. Right. That's interesting. So uh, Daryl is saying that he heard Dr. Greger say that if the salt is provided by miso, it has fewer adverse effects 
than other forms of salt. But if I understand you, you say salt is salt is salt. Salt is salt is salt. It's a sodium ion that gets you into trouble. Right. And and that's sodium chloride. And I don't care what it is. It's it's salt. <laughs> it gets you into yeah. trouble. If you're salt sensitive, not everybody is salt sensitive. Yeah, that's interesting. And so, so I, it, it, does a person know they're salt sensitive by how, by, by their numbers or by how they feel when they consume salt? Yeah. Um, many patients I, I see have with very difficult with cold hypertension when they go on a low salt diet, the first thing they say, well, I feel normal again. So they're not only is their blood pressure down, but they're feeling normal again. Some of that's because they're able to stop some of the medicines they were on. That's not making them feel normal. Interesting. So uh, Stephanie's saying, how much iodized salt a day do you need? You don't really need any, do you? Uh, no, if you eat bread, for example, uh, and many, many products that are even salt-free products have iodized iodine in them, a little bit of iodized salt. You don't need much. Okay. 250 milligrams, uh, one packet of McDonald's, which is iodized salt, by the way, uh, will get you enough iodized salt. So we should go to McDonald's and get one of those because that, yeah, right, that, right. that's the exact right. Yeah, miso can actually have more sodium than than salt, depending yes, on the brand. Can. Yes, yes, it can. Well, uh, people like to use things like I don't know if you ever heard of like raw coconut aminos, um, right. breads, amino acids. These things are lower in sodium, but like you yes. say, they're still salt. Uh, there may be still be salt in them. Yeah, one of the ways to get potassium up that I I recommend is to use low sodium V8. Regular V8 is loaded with salt. It's a salt bomb, but the low sodium is, al is also loaded. Low sodium V8 is also loaded with potassium. And a cup of two cups of that a day will give you most of the potassium you need for the DASH diet. Interesting. So I have a friend that eats exactly like me and has blood pressure like mine. But when she goes to the doctor, which is rarely, it's sky high. And then they go, well, we have to do an EKG. What is that effect? And how can a person ameliorate that if that's right. them? When they go to the doctor? That's, that's sort of an alerting response that what I like to call it. When you see a doctor, you get kind of scared and some people adapt to that, but other people just can't, just don't lose, lose that reaction. So measuring blood pressure at home is the way to go these days. And there are a number of devices that are accurate and can be used. And, and uh, in fact, one of the ways when I put patients on the DASH diet, I have them measure their blood pressure every day. And they can see it that it's usually down by the first day, started down the first day with the home blood pressure. Yep. Uh, Darius says, what are your thoughts on stress levels and or cortisol levels on blood pressure? Right. Uh, stress levels. Some people, blood pressure goes up when they st are stressed. Some people don't. What stresses you probably doesn't stress me or may not stress me and so forth. So it's, Stress is very difficult to quantitate and it's been very difficult to affect it. We have done some studies with classic transcendental meditation, which is probably the, the most advanced and most ancient form of stress reduction. We've showed that that lowers blood pressure, uh, practicing that twice a day. But stress, it's, it's, it's so hard to pinpoint actually. that it, it's, I think it's, I, I've done a lot of research on it, but it does, it can help in some people. Yeah. You know, I noticed that um, when you, when I was younger, I'm in my 60s, you'd go to the doctor and they'd measure your blood pressure with a sphygmomanometer and the stethoscope. And now they, they, then what they switched to was something that like blew it up by itself. And now they've got this thing where they just put a bracelet on you and you go like this. Right, right, Do you right. think those are as accurate, the newer ones where they're just measuring you like this? Uh, yeah, that, that's an important issue. The, the gold standard still is to have somebody listen to your blood pressure. When those machines are tested to be sure they're okay, they're tested against a blood pressure that's been listened to by a trained person using a standardized manometer. Mercury used to be the standard. They have pulled that out of all doctor's offices, unfortunately, but it, there's nothing else as accurate as a mercury manometer. Yeah, I, I, you know, I cannot tell you how many years it's been since anyone took my blood pressure like yeah. this. It's always yeah. this, you know, and yeah. it's like that's weird, you know. Yeah, and and um, those work a lot of the time. It, many of them on the market have never really been tested. They can be marketed in the U.S. without being tested. But uh, so if you if you want one, you want one that has AMI, American Association of Advanced Instrumentation, that this device has been approved, and also take it into your doctor and have them validate that it works right. But it's 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 the best way to judge how your blood pressure is doing is a home blood pressure. You can get many more measurements. You're probably more relaxed. But you're right. Uh, many people with the wrist thing don't put it up here. They put it down on the table, and that gives you a false high pressure. So you got to do it right. Yeah. 
Yeah. It, it's almost like they're not trained anymore to do it the old fashioned right. way. Right. Right. And that's one of the issues. Yes. We've, uh, my wife's business was training people how to do blood pressure correctly till the automatic devices came in. Yeah. And they say, I, I, I like the old fashioned way because yeah. I could feel what my blood, I mean, like yes, I could yeah. feel it and I'm like, I know what it's going to be because I could feel when it's that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And, and some of the, in the old days, uh, when I taught everybody to take their blood pressure home with a listening device, some people couldn't hear well enough, but they can feel it. Some people can actually feel when it starts and stops. Yeah. And that's pretty accurate in those people. Yeah. I mean, I used to be a respiratory therapist. So it's something ah, yeah. I know how to do, but again, yeah, yes. they, they just don't seem to do it anymore. Doctors don't even wear the stethoscope <laughs> anymore around like yeah. they used to. Yeah, lost, um, lost art. Yeah, one of the viewers is asking if you could please address orthostatic hypertension. What should someone do with this disorders? Because some doctors recommend high salt. Yeah. Uh, orthostatic hyper, hypotension is when your blood pressure goes down when you stand up and that's due to a often to a sympathetic nervous system control system not working right. And salt, high salt diets does help sometimes. And some of the hormones that make you retain salt are used to treat that sometimes. So that's that's a special category where salt might be useful. Right. But they can get too much salt and get hypertensive also. So you gotta, you gotta I may have a measure at home and I have a measure standing up, seated and standing. So you know if it's dropping. Yeah, absolutely. Other than the fact that it raises blood pressure, are there any other deleterious effects of salt? Because I've heard some of the doctors on the show, like Dr. Furman, speak ill of it for other reasons. Yeah. There's there's some evidence that gastric cancer. Yeah, that's what he said. Those who eat, eat salt. Uh, it may lead to more osteoporosis and fractures in women, particularly high salt diet because it get it deletes potassium from your body. Um, yes, so there, there are... Uh, important reasons to be sure you're eating healthy. Yeah. Well, you know, I, the thing is, I, have you read, I'm curious, a, a Michael Moss's book, Salt, Sugar, and Fat, How the Food Giants Hooked Us? Uh, I have not, but it sounds like it's one I need to read. It's really, really, I've had him on the show and he re, yeah. did a follow-up book called Hooked, but it's, it's really interesting because we have a love affair with sugar, fat, and salt. Yes, yes. I, I got into trouble when I was in Wisconsin because I fed Lunchables to rats and they got very hypertensive and developed kidney damage and, and uh, Lunchables is made in Madison. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting is in the book, they talk about the person that invented Lunchables wouldn't even allow his children to eat it. Yes. Right? Yes. Right. And they, they've gone, I just looked at them yesterday in the market. They've gone down a little bit, but they're still salt bombs. Wow. That, that's just, that's incredible. Well, you know, when you think about human history and how we evolved, there was no food in nature that had salt and sugar in the same bite or salt and fat in the same bite or sugar and fat in the same bite, right. sugar, right. fat, and salt in the same bite. But that's what a restaurant food processed food is. It's, it's a, it's a bomb, a cal caloric bomb of sugar, yeah. fat, and salt. It's exactly, that's exactly right. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you are what you eat. <laughs> yeah. That's so interesting. I love it. Well, um, do you eat do you eat a low salt diet yourself? I do. I do. I do eat salt once in a while. I've got I, my blood pressure runs about 110. Uh, if I eat too much salt, it goes up. So I, I I can sort of titrate how much salt I need by how my blood pressure is doing. And other people are like that too. If they get too much, their blood pressure goes up, and they don't feel well. They get headaches. They if they uh, eat the right amount, their blood pressure comes down, and they feel normal again. You mentioned that you had been to a restaurant recently that it was so salty you could barely eat it. Yes, correct. Um, some kind of a, a sauce that was, I, I can't remember exactly the name, but it was, uh, I like salt a little bit, but the, you know, as, as you said, it, it tastes bad when it's really high, if you're not what, used to it. What I don't understand is if people like salt, they, you know, it's the, they, they have every right to eat it, but why would anyone cook with it when it dissipates? Why not just have the salt shaker on the table and let the family members add it to their degree of liking? Yes. Not everybody yes. likes the same degree anyway. Correct, correct. And that's what the Chinese study that used a salt substitute that decreased the risk of stroke in families found is, is the only salt in the house was a salt substitute and blood pressures came down, stroke rates came down very nicely. So substituting in your home might be something to try. It's better not to add it in the first place. Yeah. Doesn't smoking also increase blood pressure? Uh, it increases transiently. Uh, yes, it does. And if you smoke 20 a day, which is a pack, uh, it'll keep your blood pressure up enough that it'll get you into trouble. Yeah. Well, we, don't, we don't recommend that either. <laughs> no, 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 not 
I remember, do you remember back in the day? I still remember commercials where yeah, doctors yeah. were smoking, you know, and I sure, recommend sure. when I, yeah. I yeah. smoked it. I smoked it one time and my son came home from grade school and said, Dad, why are you smoking? It's dangerous. And I stopped. <laughs> I haven't if smoked for 50 if years. It were, if it were only that easy for us. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the hardest thing I ever did in my life. Wow. Well, congratulations. Uh, yeah. Susan says, what ratio do you need to balance potassium and salt? Uh, if you're talking about the sodium ion, you need about uh, a third of potassium. You need three times as much as you have sodium. So the DASH diet is 1500 milligrams of sodium and 4,700, which is about three times more than that. So that's, that's the, the best ratio that we, we know. And based on large, uh, a large amount of information, there's 1,500 articles published about the DASH eating plan, the best studied diet in the world. Nice. Uh, somebody is asking, what about Dr. Bronstein's book, Salt Your Way to Health, in the book, The Salt Fix, by some doctor that they say we need at least three grams daily. Wow. He's not treating anybody that I know. Yeah. <laughs> he's, not, he's not seeing many people with high blood pressure, I don't think. Yeah, absolutely. A sissy says, what about coffee? Does that raise blood pressure at all? If you're not a coffee drinker, it'll Okay, the caffeine will kick it up transiently, but it doesn't seem to have any long-term health effects. Although there's the data on that kind of goes plus or minus. So I do drink coffee. Nice. How concerning is a higher systolic number, but a low diastolic number? Uh, it's, it carries the same risk. In fact, in the, in the insurance studies that I mentioned and in the Framingham studies, all the risk is carried in the systolic pressure. So you can ignore the diastolic pressure. There's a long uh, study called the SHEP study, systolic hypertension in the elderly, in which they treated people who only the top number was high and death rates were reduced by about 25%, stroke rates by about 25%. So isolated systolic hypertension is something that you should not like to have. Yeah. You know, it's funny, a while back, I was hired by a hospital and, and to, to help make recipes and they, they, to, it, in their cafeteria. There was so much sodium in hospital food that, yes. that it was like even more, it was like going to a restaurant, you know? Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, and and the schools and the prison system, every place uh, that well, provides. Because they say, you know what they say? They say that hospitals, the patients give ratings and if they don't give them what they want, the crappy food with all the salt, they'll get a bad rating. Yeah, and I've I've talked to people who do who sell meals, and they keep telling me if they, if it doesn't taste good, you can't sell it, which is probably true. But that uh, many people are are more interested than they used to be in trying to change what they eat and change their blood pressure and other we, health. How do we fix this? I mean, it seems like it has to start in utero almost. The parents have to stop eating so much, you know, because because like you say, kids don't naturally come out of the womb wanting, you know. Pretzels. Right, 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 right. And human milk has the lowest sodium uh, in the world. So that's telling us something, I think. Yeah. That's what we ought to be feeding our kids. One of the, one of the classic salt industry issues, uh, probably 50 years ago, was that the salt in the food industry, baby food industry used to add salt to the baby food. So it would taste good to the mother. So if the mother tasted it, it tasted good, then they'd give it to the kid. And after great, uh, legislation and, and uh, lobbying, they finally got the food industry that makes baby food to stop adding salt to that. But it was a great, uh, a great battle between the salt industry and, and the healthy, healthy food industry, I guess you'd call it. Babies don't naturally salt their food. No animal in no. nature. Well, there's no salt shakers in right. nature. I know right. they, they, don't do, they don't do that. Exactly. Often. So when you worked for Dr. Kempner, did how often did the patients eat and was the amount of fruit and rice like could you tell me like what their diet was how often did they get it what the quantity was they got it three times a day it was if they lived in the rice houses in durham which they were in a number the food was all prepared for them so they didn't really have to fix it they had to learn how to fix it when they went home some people could do that and did very well for years and other people just couldn't do it or wouldn't do it they just couldn't tolerate it and as I mentioned, some people are really addicted to salt, I think, and it's very difficult to get off of it. Um, but it, it's very I think they actually put salt in cigarettes, sugar and salt. I don't know if that's true, but I, I would I wouldn't put it past uh, them. If it I've is never, I, I don't think you get much salt from smoking. There is some uh, data from India in places that make salt that those who inhale a lot of the salt have more high blood pressure than those who work outside where the salt dust is not. So you can inhale salt but I don't think cigarettes have enough in it to get anybody into any trouble. I'm going to Google that while you kind of take me through okay. what they ate on the rice site. Like what time was breakfast? How large of a serving was it? And what, tell me what they ate. 
uh, it was rice and fruit, um, usually a cup of rice with every meal, and it depended on um, uh, which, which phase they were in. Once they got down to what Dr. Kempner called a, a healthy weight, which most people thought they were starving, um, then he would add stuff back till their, their weight maintained what that, that baseline, what he called baseline late weight was. Uh, so he'd add back once they got it down. There's some very nice books actually on the rice diet um, that uh, give all the details on what you should, should eat. And, and the same thing for the DASH diet. There's some very nice books on how to, how to prepare that at home. How to, and and the, the beauty of the DASH diet is I can tell if you're on it by measuring the salt and potassium in your urine. Uh, and Dr. Kempner did that every day, a patient who was there in the rice house got their urine checked to make sure they hadn't strayed. And he would chew them out very vigorously if they had strayed. They had a morning weigh-in uh, and he'd also go through their salt. Oh, I see your urine salt just jumped up. You went to the pizza house. What's going on here? And in fact, I think Dr. Nealon, you, somebody asked Dr. Nealon about uh, Buddy Hackett. Buddy Hackett was in the rice houses for a while. He, he thought it was very funny to run around and add salt to those people's urines. That's not funny. Because he could see him get chewed out by Dr. Kempner. There's a great Johnny Carson bit with Buddy Hackett on there talking about that. It sound, I mean, I could do the rice diet, except the quantity. I mean, because yes. when I eat rice, one cup is not enough for me. Yes. Right, right. And, it, and, and uh, it just depends on until you're full, right? And breakfast, lunch, dinner snacks were he did add low salt peanut butter uh, they added later uh with, that had no salt in it uh which which uh it had it had a little bit of chicken back or a little bit of meat um but and then if the pressure started up again they would uh, uh hang on a second sorry i thought i turned my oh, that's okay and i'm curious did, it, 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 at any point on the kempner diet were people allowed vegetables or were those considered too yes high? no they they got vegetables as well um, and so it's not strictly rice and fruit. If you look at the menus that came out, really Rosati, uh, Kitty Rosati, uh, who worked with Dr. Nick Neal and worked with he and Dr. Rosati, who ran the rice houses when Dr. Kempner retired, has a nice cookbook. Yeah. You, you said in, when we were uh, communicating by email, when uh, we were introduced by Dr. McDougall, and thank you very much, Dr. McDougall, for this fabulous guest, that you run a support group for people. Yes, I uh, I run a, a website group called uh, hyperallosteronism at groups.io uh. for people with a, with a difficult hypertension. Uh, the most common cause of difficult hypertension is related to excess hormone from the adrenal that causes the body to retain salt and water and, and lose potassium. So the DASH diet is perfect for them. So I can have them uh, use the chronometer to track at home what they're eating move, get the DASH diet and follow the, the DASH diet book that I recommend has a 14-day trial, exactly what you should eat for 14 days and measure your blood pressure at home. And if your blood pressure comes down, either you're, you're uh, not following the diet somehow, you're strained, or your blood pressure is not DASH, what I call DASH sensitive or salt sensitive. Probably. So it's, easy, it's, easy, it's very easy to administer, works very fast. Systolic pressure is down in a week, diastolic in two weeks. Many patients have to step down their medicines during that two week period because their blood pressure will come down so much. Yeah, it's quite important to work with a doctor, I think. Yes, it is. Chucky yeah. says, what about low sodium and blood tests? Does that mean you're not getting enough salt or drinking too much water? I know somebody that drinks so much water, it can really right. fill off all of her blood yeah, tests. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, blood sodium is almost never related to how much you're eating. There are other control systems that control the sodium concentration in the blood that gets you into trouble. Uh, some people with diuretics will occasionally lose so much salt that they get into low blood sodium. Uh, but it, it's an, it doesn't reflect at all usually what your diet salt is. Potassium can. And one of the problems in the patients with a difficult hypertension is they get, their potassium gets so low they get paralyzed sometimes actually. That's really interesting how uh, Dr. Kempner tested the urine so people could not cheat or I mean, right. they, like that, that that's yeah. very interesting. Marion says, I have syncope. Should I not be omitting salt? Uh, depends on what's causing the syncope that's fainting. And, and um, there are many causes for that. So I'd be sure that low salt is not one of those. One of the things I do is have patients measure their blood pressure seated then standing for a minute and then go up and down on their toes 10 times and measure it again. And some people who faint because of 
blood pressure dropping too low, they'll get really dizzy when they go up and down on their toes 10 times. But uh, most doctors don't check that. And I learned that back in the days when we were using really powerful hypertensive medicines that weren't weren't as good as they are now. And a guy that I was seeing uh, was a brick brick carrier, went up and down ladders in the summer for carried bricks. And he said, Doc, uh, when I get to the top of the ladder, I'm almost fainting, <laughs> which was yeah. scary carrying a, a hod of bricks. And I took his blood pressure after exercise and it dropped to below uh, 70, I think. Does, does it, exercise lower your blood pressure? It normally will lower it a little bit, yes, because your your blood vessels open up and blood can get through easier and it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be pumped so hard. Interesting. That's good. While I you're exercising, the systolic may go up, diastolic usually goes down. But, but you know, a lot of people, most people don't exercise. Let's face it. Even, right, even right. people that eat healthy, fewer. I, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. And yeah, I, I know. Right, most right. Most people <laughs> are not exercising. Yeah, yeah. There's a question yeah. from a live viewer. What do you think of a lot of white potatoes if they're eaten without salt, yeah. oil, or dairy? Uh, that That's probably as good as rice um, because it has, and I noticed you you love the, the super potato. I like sweet potatoes right. better, but I do yeah. love potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they're low salt, also high potassium. So it's, it's good for the, for the uh, blood pressure control system is to eat lots of potatoes. Maybe yeah. not with so much butter and gravy, but good potatoes. There's so many things you can put on them. Yeah. What are the side effects of high blood pressure medication? Uh, some people, uh, I call some of them the shadow. The, they cloud men's minds. They don't, they don't think right. They have what they call, um, um, I just can't remember, uh, brain fog. And, you know, I can't remember what I'm doing. I can't do the checkbook. Uh, most, many of the medicines now don't have that side effects. Many of the ones used to. Impotence, uh, because they work on the sympathetic nervous system, will interfere with uh, impotence in, in men and women. Um, and uh some people can get dizzy when they stand, have the postural hypotension because they dilate the blood vessels. Um, there are some some patients, some medicines lower potassium, and you pee potassium out, and you get cramps in your hands and and muscle spasms and numbness around your face and your hands. And uh, you may have to get up at night to pee. One of my patients who had low potassium had to get up fourteen times a night uh, to pee, which kept her up <laughs> a lot, as you might imagine. Yeah. Does high blood pressure medicine really save lives? There, the data is, uh, there's probably no, no uh, health issue that we have such good data that lowering blood pressure saves lives. Um, there's just, there, and I'd be happy to go through some of those studies in the future so people can understand how we tested that. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, you know, the thing is, is, you know, modern medicine, there's so many benefits to it. But if if it wasn't invented, then people would have had to make the dietary and lifestyle change. You know what I mean? It makes it so that, well, you know, I'll just take a pill. That's that's the kind of the thinking in our society, a pill for every ill. Yeah. And that's the reason the dash diet fell out of uh, or the rice fruit diet fell out of custom because medicines would now control it without. Well, having let's it. bring it back. Let's have a movement. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and that would be a really easy place to work as a chef. I mean, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't require that much, you know? Yeah, no, it doesn't. It, all you have to do is just leave the salt out. It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah. Does alcohol have any effect on blood pressure? Uh, more than two drinks a day raises some people's blood pressure. Um, and uh, decreasing below that will lower some people's blood pressure. But the only way to find out if it's bothering yours is to stop it and see. And it'll come down also very quickly. Nice. There's a... Uh, one, one of the things they found in Ireland, I think, was the highest blood pressure you measure is on a Monday morning uh, because everybody's out drinking heavy on the weekend and they're withdrawing on Monday morning. So they get, and one of the signs of what alcohol withdrawal is your blood pressure goes up and you get a rapid heart rate. Well, is that what the reason that heart attacks are most common Monday morning or is it just because people don't want to go to work? Uh, I never thought about that. That could be a possibility. Yeah. I just thought maybe because people were trying to get out of going to work, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, and people are asking, why do they have salt licks for cows? Because uh, cows die if they don't get salt. And uh, there's some old studies showing that if you feed pigs, if you're growing pigs and you feed them salt, they gain weight much faster. I suspect it makes salt increases appetite, I think. 
And, oh my God, and, that, that's, I thought was going to be my next question. And, and if, if, depending on how long your answer is, I'm going to try to pull right. up the study. But there was a doctor on the show, Dr. Rosanna Alviera, who provided this, that how salt is a, because I, I, I work with people that are food addicts, they sure, want to lose sure. weight. And she had mentioned that salt is a powerful appetite stimulant and it encourages passive overeating. And then when people salt their food, they eat 11% more calories. And those calories usually come from fat. I'm going to find that study. And I'd, I'd be happy, maybe I can find my pictures of pigs before and after f- given the salt lick because they gain about twice as weight, uh, fat, much fat, because they eat more. And it must be that I'd be interested in looking at his information. Yeah, that That is really interesting. I don't, I've never heard of uh, a salt room, but Linda says, what about these salt rooms that are all the rave? They're supposed to be good for allergies. I've never heard of a salt room. I, uh, I haven't, I haven't either. <laughs> yeah. I've heard of these. Have you ever heard of those those flotation tanks or like where you yes, just yes, yes. I mean that that's probably okay, right? I mean, that's not going to raise your blood pressure. Probably, probably do you, not. Does it absorb through the skin as well if you're laying in salt water? Uh, probably not. You can breathe it. You can breathe it as I mentioned, if you work in a dusty salt manufacturing place and get hypertension from that. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't it's not absorbed through the skin much. Erica says there are other factors that contribute to high blood pressure. It's not just about the salt exclamation. I know this from my own life. So what are the other factors then? Um, well, your, your adrenal gland can make a number of hormones. Cortisol is one of them. Somebody mentioned that. If that makes too much cortis- cortisol, your blood pressure will go up. Makes too much aldosterone, which is a salt and water con- controlling hormone, your blood pressure will go up. If it makes too much adrenaline, your blood pressure can go up. So that will cause it. Uh, but on, on the average, the main issue is related to salt. I don't care what people say. That's what the data says. And if you want to test that in yourself, you can go on your eating plan for two weeks or the DASH eating plan and any of those. Your blood, if your blood pressure is salt sensitive, you can now test it and see if it goes down. Yeah. And many people I see swear they're on the DASH diet or the low salt diet, but when I check their urine, they're not. I know. Isn't that great that you can do that? <laughs> And I say, show me the P, you know, if you're, if your blood pressure isn't better on the low salt diet, show me the P and let's see. And almost yep. always it's high. Yep. P don't lie. Right. Okay. Don't lie. That's exactly right. Susanna says, when you rinse canned beans, do you remove all of the added salt? Because they do sell salt-free canned yeah. beans as yeah. well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, some of the salt is still in the beans because it's diffused in with the liquid. So you, you reduce the salt a lot. Um, it's better just to use as, as you do to start with the fresh beans. Yeah. Or buy salt-free. Yeah, or buy, salt-free you can buy them salt-free. So you get off some of it, but not all of it. Yes, makes right, right. That's what I would have guessed. And because I can taste the difference. Uh, yeah. When, yeah. There's a question. What is, is there a correlation between consuming salt and having thyroid issues such as hypo or hyperthyroidism? Um, not un- unless you're, you live in an area that is where the iodine is deficient. The Caucasian mountains are places like that. India is places like that. If, if where there's no potassium in the foods that grow there, then you can get into thyroid, low thyroid trouble usually, and you get a goiter, a big goiter in the neck. And and uh, um, I did some work in the Republic of Georgia, which is a goiter, what's called a goiter area of the world because of the low potassium. And uh, all the salt sold in in Georgia was supposed to be iodized. But when I went into salt into a grocery store to buy salt i'd say i need some iodized salt they said oh we ran out of that last week because it's a lot cheaper to just use the non-iodized salt same thing and i found the same thing in africa it's it it's it's mandatory that salt contain iodine but you can't buy it any place in many of the stores mm. it's, it's cheaper yeah do you uh, are there any patients left from that you treated that were on the rice diet that you're still in touch with that are having success or still uh-huh. alive? No, um, that was in, uh, I left Duke in 67. So most of those people that, um, Dr. Neal would be the one that has the best data. He showed some nice slides, I think, on that one gentleman. Um, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that because you, you had mentioned the patient that was 475 pounds. There, right. there are people of that weight and higher, yes, yes. but back then that they weren't as many. Um, that's that might well be true. Yes, because people were cooking more at home, I think, in those days and weren't getting all the extra 
salt may be driving their appetite. I don't know. That's something to, to be thinking about, I think. That, that, that's interesting. Uh, Daria says, do you advise limiting celery due to its higher sodium content? You know, there, you know, have you ever had like charred, like that, to me, greens taste really salty. Yeah. yeah. Celery is one of the highest salt uh, vegetables, but it, it'd be almost impossible to eat enough celery to get uh, 1500 milligrams of sodium. So yeah. it, it's the highest of the vegetables are all low salt, basically. So it's not important. Uh, and yeah. Some some sources of water around the country have more salt than others, but it's, it's so low that drinking you couldn't drink enough water to get get you into trouble with the salt. And what's funny is I'm I'm not a picky eater, but celery is probably the one vegetable I just really don't like. I mean, I'll eat it, but but I don't seek yeah. it. You know, just yeah. don't love it. Uh. And, and TS is saying, which Dash Diet book did you say has the 14 day trial? This is uh, one by Thomas Moore. It's called The Dash Diet for Hypertension. You can look it up on the web. Uh, Kindle, you can download it from Kindle for, I think, $7. Maybe I'll, maybe it comes in Audible and I can listen to it. Uh, it might. Uh, I haven't I haven't checked that. I think it might not be very exciting. The recipes wouldn't be very exciting, I don't think. But <laughs> it, does, it does have all the science. Interesting. Uh, does seaweed, nori sheets, or dulse flakes increase blood pressure? Uh, you'd have to eat an awful lot of it, I think, to get to get uh, enough salt to get you into trouble there. Yeah. Here's an interesting question. How do you balance low salt if you're already on blood pressure medications and a diuretic? I think work with your yeah. doctor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I, I would encourage people to uh, to follow the old adage that pharmacy begins in the kitchen. OK, pharmacy should always begin in the kitchen. Tell the doctor you're you're interested in trying to change what you're eating and, and affecting blood pressure. And it might decrease my need for medications. Can I work with you and you can help me to adjust them down if needed uh, to get me off many of the medicines? Uh, but you want your blood pressure, the goal today in blood pressure, you mentioned the differences in uh, goals now is to, the healthiest blood pressure. That is the one you live the longest with, with without the least side effects of dying early uh, is uh, 120. Systolic 120 is where everybody should be trying to get. Uh, well, 120 or can it be lower? I mean, it doesn't or have lower, to Or okay. lower, yes, yes. Because then I got, I, I got to do some yeah. work. If, I got to <laughs> raise <Great>. mine. <laughs> okay. And as long as you're not falling out. Yes. Because Susanna says she's in Canada and she wanted to know what do you feel is a healthy normal blood pressure? Because in Canada, they say 120 over 80. Yes, that's... Uh, by if if you look at people who live the longest, those who have 120 or over 80 or less live longer than everybody above that. We don't have data yet. If you're one, say 128, if we lower that, we're getting some of that data now uh, that you do better. But every every blood pressure level has been tested. We keep lowering it because we find that keeping it below a certain amount is healthier than not keeping it below a certain amount. Nice. If somebody's saying I eat a little salt and have never had high blood pressure, that person's probably not salt sensitive. Like you right, mentioned. right. And there, that is probably inherited. We've done a lot of twin studies. And uh, if, if one twin is uh, blood pressure goes up when they eat salt, the other, if an identical twin is much more likely to go up than non-identical twin. Okay. So it's inherited. Isolda says, I use a salt crystal instead of a deodorant. Can my body absorb the salt? A lot of the doctors on the show don't recommend using deodorants or antiperspirants. Yeah, yeah. They're not necessary. I'm not, I'm not aware that that's a serious uh, salt load. I don't think it's absorbed to the skin. Great. I, I, the easiest way to do it would be stop it and see if your blood pressure gets better. Interesting. Uh, Cindy says, are all rices created equal? Or are there some that are better than others? A lot of people nowadays worry about the arsenic in the rice. Right. Um, yes, uh, some people prefer the brown rice. I think I like brown rice. I think you said you like brown rice also. I like, I like white better, but I do. Love <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, um, uh, it, and uh, some rice, depending on where it's grown, does have arsenic. Some doesn't. It's probably better not to get the right arsenic one, but I'm not sure how you find those out. Uh, there's some sites on online where you can look at content of things like that toxic issues in, in food and uh, even in medications. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. I saw, um, Aaron says, after eating a high sodium meal, how long does it take to pee out the excess sodium? And do teas like dandelion reduce high sodium levels? Okay, that's, that's an excellent question. I, I think I told you I spent a, a year in Australia with Dr. Denton 
studying salt metabolism in sheep. And the, the body gets a signal that your salt intake has changed. That is, a kidney has sensed that within 30 minutes after you change whatever you're eating. So if, it's a, if you eat a low salt diet, 30 minutes later, your kidney is already holding on to salt. So you're not losing too much. If you eat a high salt diet, it's already peeing out that salt within 30 minutes. When I get salt accidentally, like because I'm traveling, you know, what happens is my finger swells and I can't yes. get my wedding ring on. Right. Off. And right. I don't I don't like the way it makes me feel. I don't know why people like it. It's so yeah. gross to me. It's like, right. Get... And, and one of one of the co complaints that they they found was a lot better on the dash eating plan was that patients felt better. There's been few, very few drugs, almost no drugs that have ever had patients on the average feel better. Uh, Dash right. diet does that, and probably yeah, your diet does the same thing. I suspect that sounds great. I would hope so. I, that's what I hear from people that are able yeah. to stick to right. it. But with food addiction being at an all-time high, not very many uh, can seem to stay on a healthy eating plan for it's very you know, diff very difficult. I struggle. Uh, uh, I just the house I retired in, I put an elevator in, and I've gained about fifteen pounds because I'm not, not going up and down steps anymore. Interesting. I'm going to have to figure out a way to exercise or eat less. Probably easier to eat less is what I've always found. Um, yeah. Well, you know, are you familiar with the work of Dr. Barbara Rolls at Penn State, a calorie density? Because I actually teach people to eat more. Yes. Uh, yeah. Cal calories are what counts. Yeah. So, so I actually eat like a lot, but my That's food correct. is just very low calorically dense. That's I mean, correct. Correct. Yeah. it's a calories account. Okay. And I don't care what anybody says. It's a calories account. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. All right. So oh, we have people wanting to volunteer for the rice and fruit diet. If you want to open up another house, you're two hours from me. Maybe <laughs> maybe we can meet in the middle or something. <laughs> uh, that would be interesting. I know Dr. Uh, McDougall has, I, I suspect uh, a lot, he, his patients get a lot better blood pressures and I suspect. Oh my they're... God, his 12 day program is yeah. phenomenal. People and get I, off I, medication I, and. Yeah. I suspect it's lower salt than he might think it is. Well, it's uh, lower salt than the rest of the world. It's than just, the rest he, of the world. Exactly. Yeah. His feeling, if I, and I don't want to speak for him, but is that it's not the deal breaker for, for some people it might yeah. be, but that it's, it makes the food taste good enough that people will stick to the diet. Right. But I'm pretty sure that he doesn't recommend cooking with it where it dissipates. He says yeah. you sprinkle it on the top of the food where you can taste yeah. it. Correct. Correct. Yeah, which is the best way to do it anyway. That's what you can do in that, you know, you get 1500, which is three quarters of a teaspoon of salt in the DASH diet. So that's not zero salt. Right. Uh, that's that, that'd be a lot more than yeah, I'm used to. Yeah, so that'd be probably, probably a lot more than you eat. Oh, way more. I, I mean, I just don't add salt. And right. once in a while it sneaks in, I'm lazy. I, I don't make my own ketchup. Sometimes I'll just have a condiment, but for the most part, no, not too much. You know, oh. many, many people who are salt sensitive when they eat a high salt diet, the weight goes up. I don't know if you've noticed that also. Not only do you I will, I will, I will I'll, I'll let you know. I've never. Okay, actually, you've probably not tried it for, it just takes a day or two. Actually. Yeah. All right. Because like I said, it's so minimal, like maybe a little. Yes. So, but yeah, I, that's very interesting. The weight can go up. So Scooby, who I'm a big fan of Scooby-Doo, okay. says, whole, I've been whole food plant-based for five years. I have left side lower ventricle HCM enlargement, side effects prevent beta blockers, other therapy, open heart, alcohol ablation. Will this enable me to reduce my heart and blood pressure? Uh, if your blood pressure is, is salt sensitive, yes, or dash sensitive. And a uh, number of studies have shown that the heart gets smaller when you move to the DASH diet or the low sodium diet, probably to your diet. I don't know if anybody's done the appropriate My diet is basically Dr. McDougall's yeah, diet. Yeah, yeah. Personally, okay. I just don't, I personally just don't add salt and it's because yeah. I don't like it. Not because I disagree with Dr. McDougall. I just don't like right. it. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I don't, I, yeah, you can measure very easily with the echo. The, the, the heart gets smaller uh, within a few days and many people, I showed you the pictures from Dr. Kempner. Yeah, yeah. So that, uh, God, he, I wish he was alive. He would have been a great guest. Yeah, wouldn't yeah, he? Yes. Yeah. Uh, one of my colleagues has been, and Dr. Uh, uh, Neilan mentioned him, Dr. Luft, who's in Germany, one of my colleagues in Indiana, has been researching all of Dr. Kempner's past work. You might want to try to contact him. Uh, it's Frederick Luft, L U F T. He's in Germany. Uh, do, do, do animal products have sodium in them? 
not unless it's added. No. Oh, so 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 people. So it's really like the cured meats, the bacon's, and the cured meats. Yes, just, yes, correct. So yeah, like when Kempner added back a little bit of chicken, there there's so animal products. There's a little bit of salt, yeah, but not not much. Natural meat doesn't have much salt in it. If you get if you bleed it, the salt the salt in meat is mostly in the blood. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Yes, the uh, meat is a good source of potassium. Because uh, so are bananas. Yeah, they are. And they yep. taste better. Uh, they do. You, you, to, to get uh, what's in a cup of low salt V8 juice, you have to eat about six bananas. So that's oh. more than most people like to eat. Yeah, I don't like to eat more than two. Yeah, yeah, they're, right, they're, right. they're very filling. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, Ashley says, what causes high diastolic blood pressure, but normal systolic? And maybe you can talk about which number is which yeah. for the layman. Yeah, the, the top number is when the heart squeezes and pumps blood into your head or aorta and the lower numbers when the heart relaxes and the blood pressure falls back down. Um, the um, Remind me what the question was again, I'm sorry. What was her, her question? Was it diastolic only high? Uh, let me look at it again. Okay, sorry, sorry. What causes high, which number is systolic and which is diastolic? Okay, squeezing is systolic, relaxing. That's, that's the high, top, that's the top, the top number. Top number, correct. And she says, what causes high diastolic, but normal systolic? It's usually the machine. It's an artifact of the machine. So have it, have somebody listen to it to be sure. It's very, very rare to have only a high bottom reading unless it's taken by a machine. So I'd have your doctor take it with listening and be sure the doctors had their hearing tested recently that they can still hear. Uh, we've, we've taught millions of people, no, thousands of people how to take blood pressure. And we've, we find, uh, we found uh, people that take blood pressure for research projects who can't hear and they know they can't hear, but they don't want to tell the, the team that they can't hear because they lose their job. So we, we believe everybody who takes blood pressure by listening should be tested every year, as does the American Heart Association. Nice. Um, Dina says, can you do the rice diet with brown rice and what kind of fruit is generally used? And any kind of fruit is fine and brown rice is fine as well. Yes, either brown or white, doesn't make any difference. But probably not avocado is the fruit, right? Um, That's pretty high. Well, it's, it's a high, avocado actually has a lot of potassium, but I don't think it has enough most natural foods just don't have enough salt to get you into trouble. Right. It's just, it's higher in fat and calories than. Yes, it is. It is correct. Yes. Uh, Bethany, who's done the rice diet says her blood pressure was 140 over a hundred eating salt and went to 120 over 80 in two weeks without the salt. Excellent. Excellent. That's, that's the proof of the pudding. <laughs> the proof of the rice pudding, I guess, is there. The proof of the rice pudding, right. Dina says, what are your thoughts on small amounts of condiments that contain salt like mustard used in small amounts, say for a salad dressing, for example? Uh, again, if your goal is 1500 milligrams, I recommend using the app chronometer and put in everything you eat, including your salad dressings. And that will tell you how much sodium, how much potassium, how much calcium, how much vitamin ABCD you're getting. Uh, and you only need to do that for a couple of days to see where you are. Read the labels of everything you used to cook with. I'm sure you you, you teach that as well. I don't eat food with labels. <laughs> right. Okay. That's, that's even better. That, that, yeah, I, like I just, that. I, I like mean, that. I stopped eating processed food almost 20 years ago. That's Excellent. why I wrote a book. Actually, sure, sure. the book is called Unprocessed. So <laughs> yeah. 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 Excellent. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I saw a question here. Oh, from Tara. Does salt help adrenal fatigue? Um, yeah, adrenal fatigue is, is, uh, well, what I want to say, <laughs> it's, it's probably not a real disease. Um, <clears throat> if your adrenal is not making enough aldosterone, the salt and water retaining hormone or enough cortisol, yes, yes, salt, it will help that. Uh, but it's, it's better to get the hormone replaced than to take the extra salt. Uh, adrenal fatigue in, in my book is a uh, sort of a made up illness. <laughs> yeah, that, some doctors feel that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so Angela says, my glaucoma doctor wants me to eat salt before bed. How do you just eat salt before bed? For lowish, lowish BP, I have no tension glaucoma and I'm thin and fear he really just wants me to gain weight. So what salt is the safest? Huh. Uh, the safest would be eating less than 1500 milligrams a day total. So just look at what you're eating 
use that app and, and track it or have your doctor measure your urine, sodium and potassium. That's easily done. That can be easily done in any doctor's office uh, yeah. or send you to the lab. And that's that's the best way to find out what you're eating. Measure urine, sodium, potassium. Very easy. Very yep. cheap. Yep. Uh, Samantha, you must have been tuned in late. I'll ask it again. But we did ask, does Nori have natural sodium that can affect blood pressure? I believe the doctor said you'd have to eat an awful lot. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You'd have to eat a lot. Yeah, this is so interesting. So are you, I, you, I, you, you had mentioned, and I put it in the show notes that you can do consultations with people. I do. I, I do consultations at the website, which is Maine. Uh, maybe we can put it up on the web on your site, Maine. Right. Uh, Main at hyperallosteronism.groups.io. If, if, you, if you gave it to me, I can add it okay. and, and put it in, or we can always add it afterwards. Yeah. It's not a problem Good. to do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, people are saying, thank you, Dr. Grimm. This is an excellent presentation. What did you call the dice again? The salt cubes? The, the, the dice of death. The dice of death. I love let me, that. Let me, I let love show that. My, uh, show my screen again here. I love that. I the know. dice of death. There we I go. I heard salt being uh, called that. Yeah. And uh, well, I can't find it right now. We can show it again another time. You know, we can almost call it sugar cubes close yeah, to that. It probably. reminds me of a sugar cube, actually. That's a good that's a good point. Um, yeah, both of them would be dice of death. Yeah. 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 People people just really love salt. They really, really do. Yeah, it's it's uh, I, I'm convinced it's addicting. Um and and I think you you sort of second that. Yeah, it's. Let just, me get uh, unshare my screen here. So. I, oh yeah, you can sh always share it again if you like. Okay. All right. Let me. Uh, sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. Take your time, and I'll okay. I'll look for this more. I actually I there was a question that I missed. I'm gonna look. Yes, I, I'll I'll look for this question and I'll ask it while you're doing. Oh, there you go. Perfect. You go. Okay. All right. Um. Go ahead. What was the question? Um. Even if. If I sit five minutes before taking my blood pressure, if I take my blood pressure a second time immediately, it's lower. Why is the second reading lower? Is it accurate? Um, that's probably part of the same alerting response that some people, when they go to the doctor's office, it's high and it, each time you take it, it comes down. Uh, we, I usually recommend, and the recommendation is that you take three, throw out the first one because it's always high. In many people, it's always high and average the last two. And, and uh uh, we don't, we're not sure exactly why that is. Some people, it goes away. It extinguishes. If you do it enough times, it doesn't come, keep going on, but other people, every time they do it, um, the first one is always higher. Is there so, a home yeah. unit that you recommend, like a, a good one for people that want to start monitoring their blood yeah. pressure at home? Uh, I would recommend if they can hear, okay, is get the one that you listen to. Um, we, we do have uh, videos to teach people how to do that. We've never put them up on the web. Uh, and that's the most accurate and easiest. To, it's not the easiest to do. The machines are good, but you need to get the machine checked with your doctor. If your arm is huge, I recommend the wrist, but only if your arm is too big for the regular cuffs, do I recommend the wrist device. Um, the wrist is much easier to use. And if it's accurate on you, it's okay to use, I think, because there are more people are more likely to take it on the wrist than using the arm. Nice. All right. I love that. Rolling the dice of death. And I think we could put some sugar in there. I need to see if I can find a, I'm not, I'm not sure if sugar is actually that kind of a crystal. I think it's a different shape crystal. I'll look it up. <laughs> All right. Did you want to stop sharing your screen now? Or uh, That's fine. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fine. Stop it there. Okay, here we go. Oh, go here, here's an interesting question. Is there any difference between taking your blood pressure on your left arm or your right arm? That's an important uh, issue, particularly as we get older. Um, there are reasons that blood pressure can differ as much as I've seen patients with 50 millimeters difference in their pressure. Usually it's because the artery going to the left arm has gotten what I call rusty and narrowed. So the blood pressure measured in that arm is actually lower. So in everybody over 60, I like to measure blood pressure in both arms. Uh, in fact, you, everybody, the first time you see a doctor, they should always do both arms because there are some people who are born with a heart problem a congenital problem in which the blood pressure is different in the arms and the blood pressure is way high up here and way low down below. Um, and that can be fixed by uh, surgery called coarctation of the aorta, one of the more common birth defects, actually. Mm -hmm. I had one patient with that uh, who was in his 50s. And um, 
he had had severe chest pain. We thought he had a dissecting aneurysm. And I measured blood pressure in both arms and found about 100 millimeters difference. And he said his doctor had always measured the blood pressure in the left arm. Left arm is always, almost always the one that's the lowest. Um, and uh, many, it's recommended to use the left arm because it's, quote, closer to the heart. But as the crow flies, that's true, but oh. not, as, not as the blood flows. And I've never been able to track down where that teaching came from. It goes back to 1930s. I found <laughs> so because with the with the one they always put it on the right correct yeah uh, uh, yeah it and uh, it's and some people uh, it depends on which room you're in if it's in one room they'll use the left arm and others they'll use the right arm and so I've had patients who've had got confused because there was so much difference in each arm I had an aunt who knew that and always used to give her low blood pressure arm to the doctor so her doctor her blood pressure would look low. <laughs> she felt people are that. asking if it's a good idea to sit for five minutes before yes. you get your yes. you should always always sit for five minutes you should never have it taken in the doctor's office seated on a table that will falsely increase it by about 12 over six um the the one you measure at home is probably a much better blood pressure than the one taken in the doctor's office yep M makes sense uh socorro says what is a normal sodium number Maybe he means yeah, one, 141 or two would be normal down to 138 up to 145. There are some diseases, the one that makes the too much salt retained hormone will rarely increase the blood sodium reading, but that's, that's pretty unusual. I've on my website, I've seen 1500 people with this kind of a problem. And I'd say maybe two or three have had a high blood sodium out of that group. Uh, there's a question. Does salt replenishment matter after exercising, say, for a long endurance run? Um, it's more important to keep the volume up and drinking while you're while you're running so you don't get dehydrated. Um, I would just I would. Uh, and some people actually crave salt after they do the exercise and sweat a lot because you can lose a lot of salt. So I would I would think about eating one of the supplement Gatorade and stuff like that might give you enough. But I depends on how much you you sweat. You can lose thirty or forty grams in four or five hours of hard work. In the in the uh, the Marines have proven this, <laughs> carrying a pack for four or five hours. In fact, one of the early studies in uh, England they they tried to get the British Marines to to work without salt and without water, and they found they couldn't. Even a British Marine would collapse if they didn't get salt and water in the heat. Wow. Interesting. Let's see. Uh, Celia says, I have syndrome of inappropriate ASH. So I have low sodium. I am restricting water and taking sodium tablets. I'm eating a whole food plant-based diet now so that I've added salt blood pressure just over 120. Usually any suggestions? Um, uh, she she probably has an ADH deficiency or ex excess, and they can now, we can now measure that hormone in the blood. If it's not enough uh, ADH, which is the antidiuretic hormone that comes from the pituitary, uh, then your 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 urine one of the key symptoms is I had to get up at night to pee because you, normally that goes up at night to keep you from having to get up to pee while you're sleeping. Uh, so I it's important to work with their doctor and figure out what works with her. For her, and, may, and you may have to adjust the sodium and the water, both. Oh, but to have the doctor measure the sodium in the urine, that gives you an idea where you are. I hate getting up tonight to pee. It's just so annoying. I just yeah. wish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing when you're on a plant-based diet, it's very hydrating. And even yes. if I drink, it's just, uh, but you just, I guess you get used to it. Uh, Susanna says, does Dr. Graham have any suggestions on how to get this across to teenagers and young adults who love salt? Being older with high blood pressure doesn't scare them now because it seems too far away in the future. Yeah. Difficult issue. <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, I would, uh, I would love to meet with the, uh, uh, people and discuss the issues of salt, at least so they're knowledgeable about what it is. Knowledge doesn't necessarily control behavior, as you know, um, and it's just it's just difficult. You've got to convince. If your family's had a lot of strokes and a lot of hypertension, a lot of heart trouble, you ought to you can you can see the writing in the cards <laughs> in the tea leaves. I think knowledge doesn't yeah. control behavior. What does? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, if I knew that, I wouldn't be sitting here. 
<laughs> Judy says, is there anything that can be done for an aortic aneurysm? Um, yes, an aortic aneurysm is when the balloon, the, the, the big artery, usually in the belly, it can occur in the chest also, but when it starts getting rusty from too much cholesterol and high blood pressure, it begins to balloon out and it'll eventually rupture. And when it ruptures, you're usually dead in, in a few minutes. Um, keeping the blood pressure down is important. There are drugs that slow the heart rate down because the, the, the up and down and the pressure is more likely to make that thing dissect and get you into trouble. Beta blockers are commonly used. Yes, there are good ways to treat that. So if it, if it gets so large, a certain then it, it, you need to have it replaced or surgery done. Yep. There's a question. Is a low diastolic number uh, anything to worry about if you have no symptoms? Um, well, if you're worried about living a long time, it may, it may, you may live a long time with a low diastolic, but yeah. it, there's nothing, unless you're fainting, uh, low blood pressure is not an issue. Yeah. But that's, that's not what the common belief is, you know? I understand. Yes. I understand that. Yeah. Well, you have been such an interesting guest. So fascinating. I love hearing about your work with Dr. Kempner. It's just so fun to, to hear about that. And right. it, it's, so, it's interesting how many people have never heard of him and his work. Right. Well, it's been a, been a long time now. Yeah. There's a, there's a very nice book written uh, by a psychologist who was at Raleigh, which is right next to Duke. Uh, I think the title of the book is Fat Like Me. And she went through the rice diet and she has a whole big psychological analysis of it. Um, um, I can I, I can look her name up and send it to you. It's a very nicely written book about the trials and tribulations of. of uh, it's, it's not Judy Moskowitz, is it? Um, that might be it. Because I had her on the show. She's uh, she's not on it anymore. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look it up. I have to look it up. That that may be who it is. Yeah. That's funny. She she was on the rice diet for a year or so, I think, and wrote yeah. wrote some very nice descriptions of the rice houses of weighing in each morning with Dr. Kempner there with his his notebook and and oh, uh, scolding people for for, for uh, interesting. Well, like it, you say, the urine don't lie. So that doesn't speak, right. That's speaking right. of That's which, right. Leanne says, if the sodium in the blood is normal, but you still have high blood pressure, should salt in the urine be tested? Yes, I think I think because so many people, probably half of the people with high blood pressure are salt sensitive. They wouldn't have high blood pressure if they lowered their salt intake. And the only way to know if you're lowering your salt intake reliably is to measure how much is in the urine. The urine doesn't lie. You can use, if you want to get a rough idea, you can use the app chronometer and fitness pal is another one. Both of those will track sodium for you. Uh, so you can find out on your own within a day or two, how much salt you're eating, but to, you need to check the urine because it sneaks in in all likelihood you're getting more salt than what, what you see in the, in the chronometer. Well, if you ever write a book, you can call it Urine Doesn't Lie. <laughs> I like that title. That's yeah, good. Not, it's not bad. I don't think it's taken. <laughs> you know? Probably not taken, yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. Right. If you ever want to come back, you know, with, you know, I know Dr. McDougal was not able to be here today. Yeah. He was okay. able to, to get his, uh, to log on today. Yeah. So I'm yeah. so happy that you were here and I, I'm sure he would love to talk to you and please feel free to come back with any of your slides or research or stories okay. about Dr. Kempner. We would definitely love to have you and anything okay. you want me to put in the show notes of how people can contact you. We would be happy to let them know. Okay. I'll just, I'll send you an email with some information. Absolutely. On. I'm just curious. Do you happen to enjoy balsamic vinegar personally? I do. Yes. Good. Because you probably don't know this, but as a first time guest on Chef AJ Live, you get two free bottles in the flavor <laughs> of your choice. So, All right. Good. Good. <laughs> well, this was, thank you so much, Dr. Grimm. This was thanks really- Thanks very much. Anytime. Let me know anytime. All right. Absolutely. Bye -bye now. Thank Bye -bye. you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Dr. Doug Lyle for Straight Talk with Dr. Doug Lyle.